right, so let's jump into section 2.2 now, which gets into simplifying expressions. Now the terminology, I'm gonna add some more terminology to the mix. So we're gonna be looking at combining like terms. So the first thing we need to know is what a term actually is. So by definition, a term is a constant, a variable, or a product of numbers and variables. And because it's a product, remember these numbers are coefficients. So, so you might have coefficients and variables mixed together as a product. Now note, terms are separated by addition. So let's take a look at this example. We have 4x to the second power minus 2y minus 5zw plus 3. So how many terms do we actually have in that whole expression? Now you might say, well, wait a minute. Well, there's only one addition symbol here, so I'm guessing two. But then it's like, well, but I got a lot of stuff with, you know, I got some coefficients and variables together. So that's something to think about as well. And you can bat this around quite a bit, but it turns out there's actually four. There's four terms in this mix. And the reason why there's four is because I kind of cheated here a little bit. It's addition or subtraction. But remember, we can write subtraction as addition. So everywhere there's a minus is also secretly an addition symbol because we could write it like this. 4x to the second plus a negative 2y plus a negative 5zw and then the plus 3. So now you can see all the plus signs in there. So we do have four terms. So we got the terms are 4x to the second. We have a negative 2y, a negative 5zw, and then the 3. All by itself is considered a term. So that would be <coughs> how we could describe terms and how we can see those terms. When they talk about like terms, then we have to put in some additional uh, conditions. So like terms are terms that have the same variables, so they might have more than one variable in there, but they also have to be raised to the same powers. Now it doesn't say anything about the coefficients, so that is not an issue when it comes to determining if you have like terms or not. So let's take a look at a few examples and just identify them. We're not going to combine them yet because we, we we're going to see how to do that in a minute. Just identify them. So. We have 5x plus 3y plus 2x plus 8m plus 6y. So there's really just a, a bunch of terms here. So we got our 5x. So all these individual pieces are all terms. So we can kind of see that 5x and 2x should go together. Likewise, 3y and 6y are going to go together as well. So those are the only pairs of like terms. In this case, Adam doesn't have anybody to go with him. So he's gonna be remain by himself. That's okay. Now, the next problem is one that people often confuse because they see a lot of X's and they say, well, everything can combine. It's all X's, right? Well, that's where the powers part comes in. They have to have the same powers as well. So even though they all have the same variable, they don't all have the same powers. So you can see that 2x to the second and 8x to the second. Those go together and that's it. Likewise, 4x and a minus x are going to go together as well. Now, just because this x is all by itself, remember it does have a coefficient. And that coefficient is 1. So we're going to need to know that later on. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so those were a couple warm-ups. Let's take a look at a really nasty one. So 7ab plus 4a to the second b plus 2ab to the second minus 3a to the second b plus 8ab minus 2a to the second b to the second. Whew. All right. So a lot of terms in here. But basically, remember, everything is sub sub uh, separated by additions and subtractions. So all those little clusters are all terms. So we got to just see which ones match up. So does anything match up with 7ab? So again, all you care about is the letters and the powers. So there's no powers on either of those. So we need something that doesn't have any powers and 8AB doesn't have any. 
So those two should be able to go together. All right. What about 4a to the second b? Does anything go with that? Well, so we need an a to the second power. That doesn't have one. That one does. That one does. This one's got a b. This one's got a b. Okay, so those two have to go together. What about these last two? Can we put those two together? No, we're not going to be able to because even though it's got a b to the second, and this has got a b to the second, this has got a two, uh, an a to the second power. This one doesn't. So you can't combine those two together. So that's where this gets really technical. So you, it's really easy to want to just smush everything together, but you can't do it. You only can match things up that have the same exponents on the same variables. And that's it. Now, how do we take care of those coefficients? Well, I'm glad you asked. To combine like terms, we simply add or subtract the, the coefficients of like terms and then tack on the common variable expression. So we're not doing anything with the variables at all. All we do is make note of what it is and we keep it the same. So looking at this example here, we got 5x plus 3y minus 2x plus 4y. So we can see that the 5x and the minus 2x go together. So we can see there's the 5 minus 2. The x part doesn't change. It doesn't change to an x squared or it doesn't disappear. It just it's like a, a, a unit. It's like apples. So if you have five apples and you're taking away two apples of the same type of apple, you should be left with three apples. Not three apples squared or not three nothings. <laughs> so you want to just keep that same units and don't touch it. Don't put any exponents on it. Same idea with the y's. We got a 3y and a 4y. So we're going to add those together, so we're going to end up with a 7y. Again, try to think of those variables as units. You're not going to square them or anything like that. All right, so now let's try these same problems again on the next page. So, same problems, and we already know which ones go together, so let's see if we can just combine them nice and quick. So again, we have the 5x and the 2x. So if you got five apples and two of the same type of apple, you better have a total of seven apples. So that takes care of those. 3y and the 6y, well, that better give you a 9y. So those are gone. And the only thing left is that 8m, so we're just going to tack it on. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is order is not important. So you could have rearranged these any way you want. As long as they're separated by addition, you're, you're good. So if you want to put the 8M first, go for it. It's still the same answer. Now, my math lab might be picky about it, but I don't believe so. They should be able to accept the variety of answers. Uh, but let me know if, if they're picky. All right, let's take a look at our X's and X squares problem. Now, we already said that the 2x squared and the 8x squared go together, so what should that combine to? 10x to the 4th? No. <laughs> Remember, exponents don't change, the variables don't change. So all you're doing is changing the numbers in front. So we should get a total of 10x to the 2nd. So that takes care of those. And now, here's where that coefficient of 1 comes in handy. If you got four apples and you take away one of the same type of apple, how many apples do you have left? You better have three, right? So 3x. And that's it. You can't combine that any further because one has an exponent and one doesn't. I know it's frustrating, but you can't do it. All right, let's try our last one, which was the yucky one. Now we said the 7ab and the 8ab go together. And there's a plus sign in front of the 8, so we know we're adding them. So we should get 15 AB, no exponents. Okay, the 4A to the second B went with the minus 3A to the second B. So what's that going to become? 
because it's a minus 3. 4 minus 3 is 1, a positive 1. All right, so 1a to the second b. And then we said the last two, we can't combine those at all, so we're going to have to just write them both as is. Now, the big thing to keep in mind is if the sign is in front of it, if you have a minus sign in front of it, you better keep that minus sign. Don't lose it. And, you know, if you have a plus sign in front of it, keep the plus sign. So this would be an acceptable answer. Now, the only other thing of note would be this one. We don't really need it in our answer. So if you wanted to be a little bit more professional, you would leave it out. Now, on a test, I'm not going to... Um, penalize you if you leave it in. In my math lab, I don't know for sure. So you want to be careful of that. So I would accept either one of these answers. Bottom one's a little bit more professional though. All right, let's take a look at the last set of problems. Although there's a lot, it will go fast. <laughs> So for the last part of this, we're going to use the associative and distributive properties to simplify them down. So in the first example, we got 3 times 10a. So what does the associative property say that we can do with those parentheses? Remember, the associative property says we can change the grouping around. So we can move those parentheses from the back two to the front two. So that's what we're going to do. And when we do that, we can combine those numbers together to get 30. Now, you're probably saying, do we have to show that step? No, you don't have to show that step. But that's what's happening behind the scenes. So just so you know. All right, same idea here. We have 5 times a negative 4y to the third power. Just like the first one, we can combine those two numbers by multiplying. So we should get a negative, yep, yeah, negative 20y to the third. All right, now this next one is a little different because now we're not multiplying like we are in here and in here. These are being multiplied. This is being added. So we got to treat this one differently. And we treat it differently by using the distributive property. So we're going to take this 6 and distribute it to both of those numbers. So we can do this in two steps. So we'll say 6 times b plus... 6 times 3. And now 6 times b is still 6b, but 6 times 3 better be 18. And again, if you're feeling pretty confident with this stuff and you can jump right to the answer, go for it. <clears throat> when the problems get a little bigger, that's when you're going to want to show some of the steps, because otherwise if you condense it too much, you'll forget what you did. So, you know, do it on a case-by-case -case basis. All right, what about this one? 3 times 7t plus 1. So again, we got to use that distributive property and distribute it. So it's going to get multiplied by the numbers. So 3 times 7 is 21, and we'll keep the t. And then 3 times a positive 1 is still a positive 3. And done. Can't combine them anymore. Because again, 1 has a variable and 1 does not. One has a variable, one does not. So you can't smush it all together. Be careful. What about this one? Negative 2 times 5m minus 2. So be careful with those negatives. So we have negative 2, and again, we're going to distribute that in. So negative 2 times 5 is a negative 10. Negative 2 and a negative 2, though, Better become a positive, right? Positive 4. So be careful. That's where you're going to get caught more than likely is those negatives. So just be really deliberate as far as how those combine. Sometimes you might get a negative. Sometimes you might get a positive. So just know when that happens. All right, what about F? Now you're looking at it, and I can tell what you're thinking right now. And I'm not even there, and I can tell what you're thinking. You're saying, ooh, 2 and 9 is 11, and then we can distribute, right? Oops, wrong button. No, that's a big no. Because this 9 is attached by multiplication. So you can't 
add first, you have to multiply first. So that 2 is going to have to wait until you distribute this 9 in. So be careful. If the 2 plus 9 was in its own set of parentheses, then yes. Then you would add those together first. So be careful. Parentheses are important. So you should get a 9m minus 36. All right. And now can we do anything more to make it more simplified? We got some things that can combine because they don't have any uh, variables on them. So 9m, a positive 2, and a negative 36 better give you a minus 34. So that's as far as we can go, though. All right, two more, and that'll wrap this video up. A little long, but that's okay. Let's do our distribution first, and we really can't do much else. Now, if you wanted to squeeze a 1 in here just so that way you know it's, there's a coefficient, it doesn't hurt. So we got the 12, and then we got the minus 6. So 12p minus 6 is distributed correctly. But now we should be able to do a little bit of combining. So we got those two that can combine and those two that can combine. So negative 1 and a positive 12 better be 11, and then we can bring the p down. Negative 6 and a positive 5 better be a negative 1. So 11p minus 1. Done. Ooh, and now the last one. A lot of distribution. So I distribute to there and there. Well, there's not really anything inside the parentheses except the negative x, so that's just a multiplication problem. That's the associated property. But if we want to squeeze a 1 in, not a bad idea. And then the 3 we got to distribute. All right, so what do we got? A negative 5, oh, and I didn't put a 1 in here. Negative 5 times a negative 1 becomes a positive 5x. Negative 5 and a positive 2 better become a negative 10. Positive 8 times a negative 1 is a negative 8x. And then a positive 3 times a negative 2 is a negative 6x. Now, if you wanted to say plus a minus 6x, it's the same thing. But it's a little bit cleaner if you just use a single sign. If you can avoid using two signs back to back, I would. Try to just use the one sign. So a positive 3 times a negative 2 is negative 6. Done. And then a positive 3 times this negative 2 is also a negative 6, but there's just no x. And then the 16 at the end. So all the parentheses are gone, so now we can combine our like terms. Looks like we got a few x's that we can combine. So we got all three of those. So what does that combine to? Well, 5 minus 8 is negative 3. A negative 3 and a negative 6 is negative 9. So negative 9x. All right, and then we got our numbers. So we got negative 10, negative 6, and a positive 16. Negative 10 and negative 6 is negative 16, right? Negative 16 and positive 16 is 0. So your answer for this one is just negative 9x. All right, so we're, we're building. We're building. All right, stay tuned for the next video where we start doing some other cool stuff. See you in a minute.